Um, I want to start just with an example of some of the numbers that we see in astronomy. So here are some of the galaxies in our local group of galaxies. Remember the Milky Way and Andromeda are the largest members of our local group. And the local group is one group in the Virgo supercluster that we're a part of. So we've got our Milky Way and its um, satellite galaxies, the small Magellanic Cloud and the large Magellanic Cloud. And then Andromeda actually has a couple of satellites too, M32 and M119. And then the Triangulum Galaxy is another one in our group. So these are not arranged here in this photo to scale. Uh, the distances between these are actually much vaster as we'll see. And here are those distances to these local group galaxies expressed in kilometers. There's a lot of zeros out there, right? These numbers would be a pain to work with if you wanted to type them into a calculator. So we're gonna turn to our good pal scientific notation to help us deal with these very large numbers. All right, so I'm gonna just go through uh, what numbers look like in scientific notation, as well as some examples of how it's applied. Uh, and then you'll get some practice using it in our activity today. So the reason we use scientific notation is just to express very large or very small numbers, both of which we find in different fields of science. In astronomy, we're usually talking about the very large. Um, in biology or physics, sometimes you'll come across the very small. So again, here's the distance to our triangulum galaxy written in standard form. And that number can be expressed in scientific notation in the following way. First, you find the coefficient of the number. So that has to be something between one and 10. Uh, you drop all the zeros after that number or before that number. And so 2.723 is the coefficient of this number in standard form. And then we multiply it by 10 to an exponent. And the exponent is the number of places our decimal would have to move from the place it is in the coefficient to the end of the number. So if I kind of count up all my groups of three, I have one, two, three, four, five, six groups of three digits, so that's 18. And then to get to 2.723, I would have had to go back one more decimal place. So that's 19 total uh, places that my decimal had to move. So this is always gonna be positive for numbers greater than one and negative for numbers smaller than one. So now we've taken this large and annoying number and expressed it very neatly and simply in a way that's much easier to work with. And of course, no number is complete without its unit. So you have to remember to include units on all of the problems you do in this class. Otherwise, the number means nothing. If you gave me this number without the unit, then I could ask you, wow, is it really that many light years away? I think that's farther than the edges of the universe. And you would have some explaining to do. So always make sure to include your unit. So if I go ahead and express now my distance to the triangulum galaxy in scientific notation, here it is. Um, it's much neater and simpler to look at. So I can actually just go ahead and replace all of these by their distance in kilometers in scientific notation. Um, so let's go ahead and work on one of these. Let's take next to the Large Magellanic Cloud and its um, distance in kilometers is listed here. So what should the coefficient be if we're gonna write this number in scientific notation? All right, cool. So it's looking like most of you have chosen B 1.49, which is totally correct. That's the only number on this list that's between one and 10. And we know our coefficient should be between one and 10. Um, that's more of a, you know, convention than a hard rule, by the way. A lot of times you'll express numbers in any of these ways and still include digits afterwards. But when doing calculations, it's usually easiest if that coefficient is between one and 10. So that's when I say number in scientific notation, usually that's what I'm thinking of. All right, so now we know our um, coefficient is 1.49. So now what should the exponent be? And remember, you can use the trick of counting in groups of threes um, to get the number of digits. All right, most of you are choosing D18. That's exactly right. So remember that Schoolhouse Rock song, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18? All right, so there's 18 uh, decimal places here that you would have to move the decimal from being between the one and the four to being at the end of the number. So this number is 1.49 times 10 to the 18 kilometers, the distance from the Milky Way galaxy to the large Magellanic cloud. 
So here's again all of our distances to galaxies in the local group. And um, we've added our large Magellanic cloud and we had before our Triangulum galaxy. So now we can see very clearly, instead of looking at all these zeros, it's now really easy to pick out which one of these is the larger number. So quick question for you, which one of these is the larger number? Cool, I'm seeing most votes for B, that's exactly right. Um, does anyone wanna just volunteer? What's the basic rule that you followed to get to that answer? Yep, just choose the one with the biggest exponent. So that would be uh, the Triangulum Galaxy with an exponent of 19 versus the LMC with an exponent of 18. So pretty simple rules, and I hope this illustrates the value of our scientific notation uh, instead of looking at all those zeros. All right, so again, here are all of the distances. Now they're all expressed in scientific notation. So no surprise, since we said that the small Magellanic Cloud and large Magellanic Cloud were satellites of the Milky Way, uh, those are uh, one order of magnitude closer to us than the galaxies of Andromeda and M32 and M119. So what do I mean by one order of magnitude? I mean that there's a one difference in the exponent on that number. All right. Um, actually, one more thing I'd like to point out here is that the unit of kilometer that we've been talking about, it in itself hides a few factors of 10. So a kilometer is 1000 meters. And so if I wanted to express these in meters, I would nix the K from the kilometer and add those three orders of magnitude to my exponent. So then the distance to Andromeda would be 2.4 times 10 to the, see, can I do math in my head? 10 to the 22 meters. All right, so those are what we call SI prefixes. Um, I think that today's activity has a table of those, but if not, there's a um, appendix in the book that talks all about it, or they're easy to find online. All right, so I wanna go through a little bit of math rules in scientific notation, and this is where it really shines. So if we wanna multiply numbers in scientific notation, we multiply just the prefactors, um, just the coefficients, and then we add the exponents. So here's an example, if I have three times 10 to the five, times two times 10 to the nine, then I get six times 10 to the 14. And how did I make that magic work? Well, I multiplied those prefactors three and two to get six. And then I added the exponents five and nine to get 14. So six times 10 to the 14. So multiplication is pretty simple. Um, division follows a similar rule, except now you, oh, that should say divide. You divide those prefactors and now you subtract the exponents. So I'll give you an an example, uh, if we have nine times 10 to the six divided by two times 10 to the three, we get 4.5 times 10 to the three. How did I do that? Well, nine divided by two, that gives us the four and a half. And then six minus three in the exponents gives me three in the exponent of my answer. So I end up with 4.5 times 10 to the three. So the basic rules are very similar. I either multiply or divide my coefficients, and then I either add or subtract my exponents. You'll have plenty of practice with this. Um, and if you need more practice, it's easy to find. Um, but if you want some tutorials or practice problems, let me know and I can provide them. Okay, let's do one to try. So two times 10 to the eight times four times 10 to the two. Okay, I see most votes for D, eight times 10 to the 10. That's exactly right. So if I multiply my two times four, I know I get eight. So my coefficient is eight. And then my exponent eight plus two gives me 10. All right, so there is the full math. Um, lots of times I like to write it out this way, group all of my coefficients together, group all of my exponents together. And you can do this regardless of how many terms are in your calculation. So I could have like three things in my numerator and maybe divide them by two other numbers. And I could still just in one step gather all of the coefficients and all of the exponents together. And that makes things easy to punch into a calculator, um, saves you steps, but also it uh, makes sure that you don't lose um, precision in your answer by rounding off and then doing you know, subsequent steps. So I recommend this particular form.